for now, let's cross to Townsville via Skype and catch up with marine biologist Peter Ridd. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Peter. We've talked before about uh, your success in the federal court uh, action against James Cook University. They did unfairly dismiss you for challenging some of the work of your colleagues, but uh, now they're going to appeal it. You, ex you always expected that, didn't you? Well, yes, because, I mean... You've got to remember that the university has got lots of cash and it's not the actual, uh, you know, the vice chancellor's cash that's going to um, go into this. And I guess they'll, they'll want to try to salvage their battered reputation. Shouldn't they actually embrace uh, this issue, accept that they got it wrong and try and talk about academic freedom? Don't you want scientists contesting ideas and evidence and, 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 and the speculation based on that evidence? Well, precisely. And in fact, their appeal is more or less going to have to argue that, uh, that you know, academic freedom is subservient to the, what they call the code of conduct, which basically is that, that they can tell you, what the academic, what to do rather than academic free speech. So they're going to have to argue that they're actually not a university. And I, I think the federal government should have something to say about that. Now, speaking of the federal government, you've still been active uh, campaigning against the proposed new laws for Queensland. Uh, to curb agriculture along the, the Barrier Reef. You're saying that uh, the runoff from rivers uh, doesn't really affect the reef because it's 100 kilometres or more offshore and, uh, and the sediment and chemicals, uh, fertiliser, doesn't get out there. And there's a lot of evidence, obviously, to support what you're saying. But there has been a letter written by a group of scientists who are an independent advisory body to government. They've written to the Federal Environment Minister saying that you should be ignored, effectively comparing you to the tobacco lobby and saying that you're full of misinformation, you're trying to confuse everybody and they should ignore you. How do you feel about... Uh, what's your response to those sort of attacks? Well, I'm pretty sure I must be onto something because rather than actually debate my, my arguments, they basically play the man. Um, so when I say there is no sediment or virtually no sediment that ever gets out on the Great Barrier Reef proper, they don't dispute it. When I say the pesticides are unmeasurable out on the Great Barrier Reef, they don't dispute it. So I think it's actually a, a, a very good sign. And by the way, these new reef laws are state laws which are coming through the state government. Yeah, yes, indeed. And look, I read that letter after the ABC, of course, highlighted it and championed it. And that's, mm. what's, uh, that's what strikes me about the letter. There was no attempt in that to disagree with any of the facts or arguments you put up. They just say they make a slur against you about uh, behaving like the tobacco lobby and say that you should be effectively silenced. Uh, precisely. So I put out this document, which I call 11 questionable claims on the Great Barrier Reef, and I can add to another 10 probably quite easily. And it was quite remarkable the response to that was basically not disputing a, a very large number of them. They keep on going on about what they call the inshore reefs, but these are not actually the Great Barrier Reef. These are the ones really close to shore, tiny amounts of coral, um, and they say they are affected. No, I don't think they are either. But they don't seem to dispute that in terms of runoff from farms, it does not get to the Great Barrier Reef where 99% of the coral actually lives. Well, Peter, thanks for joining us again. Good luck with that appeal. You'll soon know as much about the legal system as you do about the Barrier Reef. Yeah, thanks very much.